Well, there we go. I'm wearing a hat. It's camo. I just got a truck recently. I, I don't know what to say. Um, beard's growing out. I, I think the South has taken hold of me. I don't know. I don't know. I might start getting accent. I already say a couple words all funny. So uh, I married a Southern girl. Man, I'm telling you what. Anyways, that's not what this video is about. Let's get started. This is part two of, uh, I guess, the series now on my conversation with Jake the Atheist. We had the conversation. We had part one where I responded to uh, logically and with the reasons and back and forths about um, the actual conversation. Hopefully I had some good, uh, good arguments, good points. But uh, part two now is a little more personal. Uh, why did I not go down the same route as Jake the Atheist? And so it's more, it's more of my story. And so this is where if I was good with editing and I could do something fancy, I would, you know, insert some sad music and I'd be looking off in the distance, you know, black and white, uh, uh, filter. But anyways, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and start talking. So, uh, why did I not go down that very same route. Jake the Atheist, if you remember from the original video, he grew up in a Pentecostal, more fundamentalist household, and eventually he left the faith for atheism. He has his own YouTube channel, Jake the Atheist, along with other things. And so I very easily could have done that as well. I remember in high school and college questioning my faith. Um, I went through a tough time. Uh, I grew up in a household that I wouldn't say was fully fundamentalist, but it was on the edges of that way of thinking, that way of life, very strict, conservative. And we're, we're in a much healthier place as a family now, which I'm very happy to, to report. But, uh, but I went through some tough times and I thought about leaving the faith at, at, at points of that. Why did that not happen? Why did that not happen? I think there's a few reasons. Uh, one of the reasons is I was trained and well-versed in apologetics. So even as I struggled with my faith, uh, there were some, in my mind, rock-solid reasons and arguments for the existence of God and for religion. I think theism provides a better framework for reality when it comes to uh, morality, when it comes to, um, I guess, existence itself, laws of logic, laws of science that make sci uh, modern science even possible. So modern science grew on the backs of Christians in the 16 and the 1700s. And so when I look at the world, I think theism better explains, some, a religion better explains a reality than atheism. And so uh, I had that, you know, when it comes to the problem of evil, I remember being so angry at God. God, how could you allow these things to happen to me? How could you allow so much suffering in the world? But I came to the same realization that C.S. Lewis did. Uh, in order for me to call something unjust or evil, I need to have a standard of goodness. You're not going to find that standard in atheism. Everything that happens in atheism, by definition, is natural. There is no such thing as evil because we're just a collection of atoms interacting with each other. If you're a hardcore atheist, odds are you're a determinist, so there's no free will. So no one is actually evil. We just do what, you know, physics dictates and the, our brain dictates, neurochemistry. And so... uh in order for there to actually be real evil, you have to have a standard of goodness. And we ground that standard in God. In order to know something is crooked, you have to have a standard for uh, something being straight. You have to have something to compare it to. And theism has a much better explanation of that than atheism does. And so first off, I was well-versed in apologetics. And even when I was at my lowest, some of those things I just could not get rid of. As much as, much as I would want to from a pleasure-seeking standpoint. I'd love to do, you know, whatever I wanted, but um, I was reined back. Um, this is where, if I was a Calvinist, the video would be very short. I would say, well, once saved, always saved. God elected me. That's why I stayed a Christian, because God chose me. 
bye. But, uh, but I'm not a Calvinist, so I can continue to go deeper into uh, this question. That was for my Calvinist friends. I love you. Y'all are great. Um, but yeah, I can, I can keep on going. I am not a Calvinist. So on top of having a good foundation, I was able to uh, not throw the baby out with the bathwater. I realized something that um, fundamentalism often gets wrong. Fundamentalism consciously or unconsciously conflates the Bible with God. And, and what happens when you do that is any change in understanding of the Bible will rock your world. Uh, Any time you come across something that, uh, oh my goodness, what if the Bible, you know, our understanding of the Bible is wrong, or maybe we need to modify it. If you're a fundamentalist, all of a sudden that's an attack on everything because you base your faith on the Bible. And it leads to this wooden literalism where, uh, for example, um, Mark 16, the ending of Mark, you know, many scholars think that ending was not original and it was added later. Uh, there's a story in John, I believe John 8, but I could be wrong, where a woman is about to be stoned for adultery. Jesus is drawing in the sand and, uh, you know, then that, that whole episode happens. Well, many scholars think that was added later. Um, it, many scholars are, aren't sure of the length of Jeremiah. Is Jeremiah 30 chapters? Is Jeremiah much longer? Etc. Etc. And so as a fundamentalist, as you hear these things, you know, all of a sudden your faith is shaken because, oh, people are asking questions about the Bible. Good questions. Uh, I know many um, uh, former fundamentalists when, uh, for for example, the age of the earth is another example. You know, they grew up as a young earth creationist, and then for whatever reason, they're like, oh, I'm now, I believe the earth is old. I got to get rid of Christianity. I got to throw it all away because they had a certain understanding of Genesis. And uh, I could go on with many examples. And what happens is people, when, when the Bible is shaken in their mind, they're gone. And my question to them is, what about Jesus? What about your relationship with Jesus? What about the tomb being empty? Jesus is risen. He has ascended. Our faith, now this is where I might get attacked by those who are more on the right. Our faith is not based on the English translation that we have of the Bible. If we never had the Bible... Christianity would still be true. Why is that? Well, Jesus came to earth. He died and he rose again and he ascended. That has nothing to do with the age of the earth. That has nothing to do with, uh, what's another one? Evolution being true or not true. If, if Jesus is who he says he is, Christianity is true, regardless of your understanding of Genesis. Or um, Bart Ehrman, he's, a, I think, a professor in North Carolina, and he often talks about the amount of variance in the uh, New Testament manuscripts, how a lot of the New Testament manuscripts disagree in minor ways Ooh, there are explanations for that, but really in my mind, that's no longer a big deal. Why? Because regardless of the age of the earth, I believe in the gospel. And so my, my understanding of the Bible has changed. Um, fundamentalists often commit something called bibliolatry, where they worship the Bible, whether they know it or not, and they hold to a certain view of scripture. And when that's shaken, they're gone. Because they, everything was on the Bible as opposed to their relationship with Christ and Easter. He is risen. And so uh, I was able to go from that way, I think more to being on the, more on the right or the far right. And I was able to move into the middle where I could still have a high view of scripture. I believe it's an Aaron. I believe it's true. But I have a proper understanding of scripture. Before, you know, and many fundamentalists do this, you might think I'm kind of joking here, but only half joking. You might think God came to earth. 
and he guided the hand of Paul. And as he was writing, uh, writing in King James English, there, thus saith the Lord, word for word dictation. Um, and so therefore you will defend word for word the Bible to the death because that's your view of the Bible, that it's literally the words of God as if he spoke them. Well, the Bible's much more messy than that, particularly the Old Testament. And so, uh, you know, when Bart Ehrman says what he says, and you learn in seminary stuff about textual criticism, which is the study of, like, manuscripts and how uh, we got to the translations that we have today, et cetera, et cetera, when things get real messy in seminary, a lot of people leave because they were idolatrous over the Bible, and they they base their faith on the Bible versus a relationship with God. The Bible was put on earth. God wrote it, inspired it through um, various people, the apostles, uh, you know, prophets, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. He he worked through them to write the Bible, and the purpose of the Bible is for us to know God, know ourselves, know others and no creation. And the Bible is perfect and inerrant in those purposes. So even as our understanding of genres change, uh, what does it mean for Genesis to be history? What does it mean? What? How, how should we read the apocalyptic genres? How should we read Isaiah, Jeremiah, Revelation? Even as that morphs and changes, well, it can do that. My faith is not shaken. Jeremiah could be short or long. Mark 16, all of it could be real or added on later. That doesn't shake my faith because uh, the tomb is empty. He is risen. And the Bible helps me to know God better. It convicts me of my sins. It helps me to love those around me. The Holy Spirit transforms me as I read it daily and I pray. And so... I guess for the Jakes of the world, and, and, and Jake is just one person, um, I'm not saying that he did these things, but it's a tale as old as time. Many people that grew up in a very fundamentalist household, uh, the Bible ends up being a stumbling block as they learn things about it that you don't hear about in Sunday school, which is really a shame. We, um, I read this somewhere, I don't know if it was the case for Christ or somewhere else, where in, in Christianity, we treat the Bible with kitty gloves. Loves. And then we wait for someone to be 25 or 18 in college or 35. They come across something by an atheist and they're like, their world is shaken. I really don't think that has to be the case. You just need to have a proper understanding of scripture. And so uh, my question to you, if you're listening to this, and maybe you, like me, grew up in a more fundamentalist household and you're, and you're, you're not sure whether to hold on to your faith... What is the foundation of your faith? Are you a bibliolater? Have you committed bibliolatry and secretly you're worshiping the Bible when the Bible's supposed to simply help you get to know God better? Um, it's, it's stuff to think about. And so I was able to swing towards the middle because I didn't throw the baby out with the bathwater. The Bible and religion and theism has so much to offer us that um, all I needed to do was modify my understanding. I didn't have to throw it away. Um, I really don't care how old the earth is. I really don't care uh, if evolution is true or not. I have my opinions on it and I'd love to talk about it, but my faith is not based on a certain understanding of Genesis. I know it's true. I know it's literally true within its genre. You just need a proper understanding of genre and we can debate and we can disagree on that, but I know Jesus is real. I know this, the gospel's real. And uh, through various evidences and arguments and uh, proofs, I, I know Jesus was, uh, he rose again. The tomb is empty. He died for my sins. And so through Jesus, I know the Bible is true. Even if, if you're on the right, you're on the left, you might disagree on how it's true. Um, I rest in that. And, and so I was able to do those things and I hope you can too. But anyway, so that's why I didn't turn out as uh, like Jake the atheist. I didn't have to throw it all away. 
Um, my understanding of science and religion is seamless. Uh, there's theism, which uh, gives us this world and, and, and the structure for the world. And then there's philosophy and science that are built on theism. And so what is the foundation of your faith? Do you have a proper understanding of the Bible? Or if, if you know, uh, let's say Revelation doesn't turn out to be true the way you thought it would be true. It's like, mm, I'm out. I thought uh, it was pre-trib. God, uh, Jesus showed up mid-trib or post-trib. Uh, I'm gone. Or what about this? Uh, you know, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I, I thought that certain gifts were gone after the first century. Well, it turns out the gift of healing is still around. I'm out. Well, no, that's silly. Well, right, because you should never base your faith on those things. Same thing with Genesis. And so, uh, you know, uh, I believe the gospel. That's where my faith lives and dies. If it, if it ever does, it would be because of the gospel not being true. And so we need a proper understanding of the Bible. So that's why I didn't leave the faith. Now, this is a response to my conversation with Jake the Atheist. I'm not saying he wrestled with these very same things, but that's what I wrestled with. And that's why I would have left the faith. And maybe you can relate to that. But anyways, friends, uh, that's all for today. I want to hear your thoughts. I want to know more. Maybe you disagree with me. Great. Tell me about it. Uh, until next time, I'll, uh, you know, uh, I guess I'll talk to you later. Get it. Quick edit here. Um, another reason why I don't base my faith on the Bible, a certain strict literal understanding of the Bible, is because large parts of our history, people didn't have the Bible. I think about Noah. Noah may have had some books or uh, oral uh, histories, whatever, handed down to him. But he didn't have the Old Testament as we have it today. I think of the new Christians after Jesus ascended into heaven. They didn't have the New Testament the way we have it today, and yet they held on to the core doctrines of Christianity. Or if you're Noah, you know, you hold on to uh, the core doctrines of God, that he exists, we're sinners, and we need him. And so uh, their faith was complete, as, as it is. And so even if we didn't have the Bible, uh, we'd be okay. We still have, you know, what's found in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. I believe that Jesus came down, died for our sins, that he lived the perfect life, died, ascended, et cetera, et cetera. So even if, you know, we didn't have the Bible as we have it today, I would still be a Christian. So that's another point I wanted to add real quick.